Now, the reason I say this, I've been awake since 4 o'clock this morning preparing for this gorgeous day that we're going to have at San Juan. It's not my first time that I'm in San Juan, so some of you may remember me from if you went to uh, any of the intermediate classes, schools here. How many of you went to William Roger? Will Roger. How many went to, uh, what was the other one? Carnegie. Carnegie. Anyway, today, uh, please do your favor. Thank you. I need the room to walk around. Well, she was trying to move it for you because it was you almost tripped over it. So no. a lady came and put it in. Thank you. Uh, my presentation today is going to be rather short, for the simple reason that I understand you have classes to do, and you also have voting to do. Oh, this class already did. Oh, they did. Yeah, so, you've got them. When I put up on the board there, real fast, you can see is basically a picture of me in liberation in 1945, April, and this is my father, both of us who were liberated from Dachau, from the concentration camp, one of the sub camps. And the other thing that I always like to do is for you to read this little poem that I write, that I wrote, because it has to do with education. Because if you don't try if you don't do what's right, you will end up possibly slinging hash, as we say. You may not even be able to get a, a job at McDonald's if you don't continue with the education. My presentation basically is in three parts. One is to tell you a little bit about me. The other one is to show you where I was born, which was a large Poland where I worked as a slave laborer for four years for the Nazi regime in, get, in the ghetto, and then transported to, the, to Auschwitz. From Auschwitz, transported again to Dachau, and from Dachau to the sub camps where we really slaved away. At the day of liberation, I weighed a total of 45 pounds. This uniform that you see was my day, my, was something that I had to wear on a daily basis. The only thing we had was a pair of pants, a shirt, no cap, and if you take a look, these shoes over here were not really shoes. They were just made up with no soles because they were given to us wooden shoes, and we had to turn, throw them away. So what I'm gonna do real quick, like, is to show you a little video Hopefully my computer will help or will, will assist me. How's that? You never know with computers nowadays. And by the way, while I'm doing this, I came to this country. I spoke no English. As a matter of fact, I spoke three words. Yes, no, and sandwich. And it was very difficult to live on bologna sandwiches every day while I was going to school all over again. I already had graduated from high school, but when I came to this country, they didn't, real, they didn't recognize my diploma. I already had two years of college, pre-med. They didn't recognize that either, so I had to start all over again to learn English. And I'll never forget my English teacher. Her name was Miss English. <laughs> but she was very strict. And what she taught me was one thing, and that is to how to diagram and sentence, which today is something very foreign in schools, how to diagram a sentence. So for your information, I know Ms. Larson is going to ask the question, so I give it to you in advance. I only speak 13 languages. Oh. And this is why that poem is written. This is how you succeed in life. 13. So. Let me continue with this little presentation as far as I don't need to speak. As far as the video. Come on now. Wake up. You know how computers are. You feel full screen. By the way, today I am a graduate 
engineer and environmental engineering. Initially, I started out about electronics and nuclear engineering, and this is how you succeed in life. As you see, these are my parents. The only picture that I have is 1938 picture of our family. This is my city where I was born in Lodz, Poland. And what you will see are two things I want to bring to your attention when I made this video in order to show what my life's history of five and a half years of hell. The only picture I have of my family is in 1938, which was luckily that an uncle of mine that lived in Argentina, he had a picture of the family. As you can see, it's my mother. Remembrances. As a little boy, you sort of play games. And I used to play a daily game in those camps in order to survive. Listen and believe this, even though it happened here, even though it sounds so distant, so old, and so foreign. This is the city of Lodz. I made that picture to show I what I saw back in 1939. The sky to the south. The war is so near. Lodz will be taken any moment. neighbor insists we should leave. Run away as far as we can. Leave everything. Just get away. By the way, the streetcar that you see is today is still the same that it was back in 1930. And there's a reason why I took Panic. it here. The turns leaving their homes. My mother talks Mrs. Gerbinski out of her ridiculous plans to flee. the Germans entered our city September the 9th, 1939. They've decided. Please notice this line to stay. We will not run. of watermelon to our Polish troops. We had a very Some modern boys, army. Even boys horse and wagon are jumping and motorcycles. Military cars with the hat of Hitler. But they came in from the other side of town already with tanks but and trucks. The past now shows if you notice our local population with their high Hitler greeting them We're given approximately 10 minutes to evacuate the main town. Take only what you can. And those of you who couldn't carry anything were shot. You will see that was my registration with the Gestapo, where my father lied to them about my age. Strictly secret to the region's president in Kalish. Jews must be placed in a closed ghetto. I will fix the date when the establishment of the ghetto will suddenly take place. They greeted us Every with said hour, music. The previously defined border of the ghetto will be manned by forces assigned for this purpose. 
the streets will be closed off by barbed wire barriers and other blocking devices. We must succeed in drawing out all the valuables squirreled away by the Jews. It is obvious that the establishment of the ghetto is only a transitional measure. I reserve for myself the decision of when and by what means the city of Lach will be cleansed of Jews. In any case, the final aim must be to burn out entirely this pestilent abscess. Ubelhauer. Right. March 16th, the hell is underground. Bloody Thursday. A pogrom in Lodge. Jewish tenants in the big apartment building on Piotrkovska Street are ordered to leave their apartments in 15 minutes. Anyone found inside is simply shot. A hundred people are killed. We run for our lives to the filthy and narrow streets of the renowned Baruti slum. What the sign says, Jews live in this enclosure. Anyone else is forbidden to enter. Guards were around, all around us. The Germans, local Germans, were already prepared with changes of streets. And there you are see. between eight and twelve. As you saw, and what I wanted to tell you about that little plaza, which I'll never forget as an eight-year-old boy. I went to visit my father, who worked on the plaza right after handing out the slices of watermelon to the troops. And the Germans, what they came, came onto that monument called Freedom Plaza. The monument was of Tedjus Kościuszko, a very famous general in Poland, who came to this land, to this new country that was not a USA as yet, to fight for the freedom to go ahead and form a United States. Tadeusz Kościuszko was a well-liked individual, a general in Poland. After he served in the United States Army with Washington and Jefferson to form the colonies, he then left. And if any of you ever get the chance to go to West Point, you will see a monument in his behalf. But Kościuszko is not a well-known name in the United States. To me, he was a hero. And why? Because of what he did. Because it also allowed me to come to this country. The place that I was standing there watching the Germans place dynamite at the bottom of that pedestal of the monument, trying to blow up a piece of marble. A man on the third floor where my father worked, was standing at the window, screaming bloody murder. What do you have against a piece of marble? What did he do to you? He was a fighter, not only to fight for to form America. He fought for the Russians, he fought for the French, he fought for Poland, he fought for freedom all of his life. And here you're gonna destroy a piece of marble. And I don't know what happened. Either he fell, he was pushed or jumped to the sidewalk where I was standing. And as an eight-year-old boy, I'll never forget seeing a man's head split open with the brain at the bottom of my feet and blood. That's a thing that will never leave my memory. Just like the slices of watermelon that I handed out to our Polish troops. 